Good morning, Facebook friends and relatives. I see we have a few people joining us today. I'm sorry for being late this morning. Um, I am outside in the garden, so I hope that this live stream uh, goes through because the service is not uh, great here and I'm still operating off of my Wi-Fi from my house. So, but here today I'm in the garden. So thank all of you for joining me this morning. And I'm not going to be too long this morning uh, because we got a lot of things going on. And for those of you that are new, my name is Lynette Tubles, and I'm your host today on Food for Life. This is our food sovereignty garden program that we have every, now it's every Sunday at uh, 10 o'clock, but today we're a little bit late. So thank you for joining me. You can hear all the vehicles going by, a lot of traffic this morning. But um, so this is a uh, part of our our food sovereignty garden program from Yellowbird uh, Lifeways. And Yellowbird Lifeways is a nonprofit organization located here on the Northern Cheyenne Reservation in Lame Deer, Montana. And so today I am coming to you uh, from my garden and um, I'm just going to go over because I'm going to start uh, cleaning up my garden now. I, I waited to do that because I want to make sure that if there's anything, any, um, any of the, the uh, worms, cocoons, um, you know, that will be turning into butterflies, any of those might be living in some of the plants. And so I just want to give it an opportunity um, so I don't destroy that. But I'm going to get started on, on cleaning up my garden today, uh, later today. But also, I wanted to let people know, um, we are, today, we are building all of the garden beds for our food sovereignty program. So we've had, I believe we have about 65 garden beds we're, we're building today. And we have an amazing group of volunteers that are coming uh, from Red Lodge, Montana, and they're going to help us build our garden beds. So we've been really busy getting all the supplies together. And uh, so I might come on later once they get here, once we get started, I might come back on live again later today um, or do a short video I might post later just to show how we make our garden beds. So I am going to, I'm not that great at Facebook Live, but I'm going to turn the screen around. Okay, how do I do that? There you go. Good morning, everybody. I'm just checking to see who is on here this morning. Let me know where you're joining us from today. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this screen around and you'll see some of the garden beds. So I do both planting um, in the garden, like in the ground directly and also garden beds. So I use a combination of both. So you're gonna see my garden um, in, in the rough form where it hasn't been cleaned or anything yet. It just, we put it to sleep last year and I just left it. And actually even some of my tomato plants, <laughs> the cages are still on them because they were so huge and I couldn't pull them, pull them off. So, okay, I'm going to flip the screen around and let me know if you can. Okay, there we go. So here I am in my garden and there's my little greenhouse that I have. So here's the garden. And you can see the beautiful scenery of our homelands here. So here's, this is the pile I pull. I did pull the corn last year, some of the corn out. And um, I just created a, a pile here. So you can see um, my pots. I grow flowers. I grow a lot of flowers in in my garden. I want to attract all the pollinators that I can. Um, here in this bed, you can see how our beds are made too. So this bed here, this was a really probably right here is one of the very first beds that we made years ago. So it's, it's actually holding up pretty well. 
but here I plant all of my greens. So here we do, I usually do celery in here too, and I do kale, I do um, butternut lettuce, different types of lettuces, spinach. Uh, so you can see it's all from last year. You know, I just left it here. And this actually makes really good compost too. So, and then see how I do the, um, I separate, I separate my my spinach and lettuce and different because sometimes I'll just sprinkle it I won't do rows but I'll just sprinkle it in that area and you can actually see I believe some of this is probably spinach coming up on its own you can see that okay so that's that bed and over here I usually grow a uh, carrots and I do have I think I did grow some spinach in here too so you see that coming up as well that's just coming up on its own because I let one of the plants go to seed so you can see it's already coming up so here I do carrots and onions and this year I planted garlic or actually last fall I planted some garlic so that's, you plant that in the fall time. So late fall, I think it might've even been like October, maybe late October, I planted this. So I can see like something's coming up here. See, you can see them. Oh, that one's a weed, but right here's another one. Here's another one. So I think my garlic is coming up and this is the first time I'm growing garlic. So I'm really excited about that. And then here, uh, in this bed, I do uh, cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower. So you can see I just plant it like there's three, three in a row and I space them out pretty good. So three, I mean the short way there's three. You can see one, two so the same thing all the way down and this right here I believe this was the um, broccoli so in this row I did do four and again more flowers these those were actually sunflowers and then right here this plot of land in the earth I put my potatoes so I grow you know one two three I Sometimes I did like six rows of potatoes, but last year I just did four. And this year I'm going to be doing some purple potatoes. I grew um, sweet potatoes as well in here and my potatoes do really well. So I'm gonna do another segment on how to plant your potatoes because there's a certain way that I was taught that is really it has done really well for me because at first I had a hard time growing big potatoes. They were just small. And so I started using this technique that Erica, she's one of our, she comes and helps every year with the garden program. And she showed me this and ever since I've been using that. So right here, I just did. Okay, I think I might have. I hope I didn't lose people. Here is my uh, this is where my strawberries grow. There's some weeds in there right now. So if you look, that's strawberries. So they're gonna be coming out, but this right here, I'm just gonna take this out of here. Yeah. So that's where my strawberries go. And I usually do a row of zinnias. So in the midst between my strawberries, so it looks like we're having a little bit of, of um, connection issues. So I'm not gonna go too far away from the house, but uh, let me see. They grew watermelons on this other end and baby watermelons and they grew really, I grew, oh, those were all tomatoes. And this box right in front of me here is all tomatoes and peppers. And then over there on the, in the 
the ground there that I grow my corn. So I actually put corn and squash in there. And here in this, um, I just grew a variety of stuff. I just put this box in last year. So if you see the depth of the box, that is 12 inches, the depth. And so the boxes that we're building today are going to be eight foot long by four foot. Eight by fours with a depth in these boards of 12 inches. And so it's it's deep, it's good size. And these this is all treated lumber that we use because we want it because you know it's it's so lumber is expensive anyway and we're investing a lot of money in these gardens and so we want them to last and so we use treated wood and so you can see you know the color that's treated and then we just use screws a drill and then we put this corner piece on to just keep it stable keep it connected so that is you know my garden i'm going to stand over here and take so you can get a better view of it so it doesn't look that big but it's really good size and we get a lot of produce from it so this year i'm going to um i'm looking at expanding this because we're going to bring in some youth to help uh, care for the gardens and then uh, so we can distribute um, a lot of this food to our elders and so you know we're going to be expanding it and I one of the things I really love to do is I really like to create a beautiful space oh the other thing is you see our fence here <laughs> we have to have a fence because we have horses all around us in this pasture and um so we have to have this fence and then also to keep the little critters out. So if you see, you know, this is the kind of fence that we use. Even my gate is, you know, to keep the critters out of here. So, uh, the and the bottom of our, the bottom of our garden boxes are, um, uh, what is it called? It's like gardening fabric. Oh, landscaping fabric, I think that's what they call it. So that's what we put on the bottom of our garden boxes and they're they're just stapled on, you know, with the, the heavy duty staplers. So we staple that on and we do usually like two, two layers of it. And, you know, so so I just wanted to show you that, get you a good idea to get you to thinking about getting out. Today is finally a nice day. We've been getting so much snow here. I mean, just like it's snowing and cold, really cold. So I'm thankful for today that the sun is out and our volunteers are gonna get here and we're gonna be making 65 boxes. That's quite a few. So, um, so I just wanted to give you an idea of how to create the boxes, maybe later, if I can get a box made closer to our Wi-Fi, I can um, post a, a short video on how they're making it. So check back on, on here on Yellowbird. And so right now, so what we're doing, you know, I'm going to be getting ready and cleaning all of these out and making a compost pile. And... So I'll make that compost pile with, with this. And some of it, you know, as the leaves are crushed, they go back into the ground. It's really healthy. It's really healthy for your garden. And then I also might bring a, I might bring a, um, I'm gonna turn this back on me. So I might bring some manure, horse manure. So we use horse manure on in our gardens. And we have compost piles that go way, way back. And so we, you know, when we clean out our stalls and do all of that, we create piles that go back like 10 years. So we have, you know, um, and it turns back into soil, really rich, rich soil. And so we use that for 
to put in the garden boxes. And you wanna make sure it's older. If you use fresh manure in your boxes, like to fill it up, you're gonna kill your, your plants. They won't grow because it'll be too rich. So you wanna make sure it's not, you know, fresh. It's not like just within this year. You wanna make sure it goes back a couple of years. And so that's what we do with all of our gardens. So all these 65 boxes that we're making, we're gonna be taking them out to the community and people that signed up on our online form here on the Northern Cheyenne Reservation and surrounding community. And then we'll be um, hauling the soil as well to fill those up. And then you can, you know, on these, because this soil has been here for a while in my garden. So I'm just gonna put um, maybe last year's manure just on the top of it, just a little bit in where my corn is and where my potatoes are in the ground. And if you're in the, if you're in the city, you can also, you know, you can purchase the bags of, of garden soil. So what you want to use in these boxes is if you're in a um, more of a metropolitan area and you don't have a lot of soil, you can use garden soil, not potting soil. Potting soil are for pots like indoors and when you're starting the new little seeds and plants. So you want to use garden soil and then you can also purchase compost. So you can purchase a bag of compost as well to put, you know, on the top of your, your boxes. So I just really want to encourage everybody to start growing. There's so many ways to grow. Like you can use the, you can use these boxes. If you have a little bit of space, you can use the, I'm going to flip this back around. You can use the pots like I have here. You can use, I use them for flowers in here, but you can, those are pretty good size. They're, they're pretty good size. So you can use those for growing tomatoes and you can put peppers in there. I mean, there's so much you can grow in these, these pots. So be creative, be creative and just start growing. You know, I read, read this um, article and also seen a lot of things posted on Facebook about it that the the price of uh, food is going to increase dramatically. So all the reason why we should be growing our own food. And I know a lot of you, you know, do grow your own food. Let me see. Oh, Ramey, uh, greetings. He honey washed it. I always, last year I was following, you know, some of the, what you were doing in your gardens and you have a huge garden and that is so amazing. So I know a lot of people garden already and are growing. So I'm really, you know, and I'm, I'm still constantly learning and I don't know everything, but what I do know, I, I wanna share it with you. So let's see, does anyone have any questions? Good morning, bye. He honey washed it. Shante. Okay, Sarah Red Hat, you signed up for the program. Ah, let me take a look at the applications. Um, there are so many, uh, we, we will get back in touch with you. I'll make a note of that. Okay, yeah, so yeah, we have quite a few um, with us this morning. So good morning to everybody. Thank you for joining us. Oh, and, and even Erica. Good morning, Erica. We're looking forward to bringing you back and helping us. The other thing is we're, um, we're in the process of putting up a high tunnel. All of our, we're gonna be getting all of our starter plants uh, within the next couple weeks. And so we wanna get our high tunnel up so we have a place to store them while we get them distributed to, to our community. So that's the other thing you have to be careful of. It's like you don't want to plant too early because we have such a gro short growing season here in Montana and we still, it still freezes. And so, you know, you want to, if you are going to plant, you want to make sure you plant only those things that are really hardy that could handle the cold weather. And, you know, a lot of different people have, have different ways of doing things. And I've heard, you know, from people that have come 
to um, pick up their, their seeds and their supplies in the last few weeks. One of them was an elder and he said that he plants his potatoes after, right after Easter. And um, so, you know, there's different ways. I, I don't put my potatoes in that early, but I will get them in in May, maybe like the first or second week of May. Um, I might start getting my potatoes in that way. I don't like to have them too early, but I also, um, this year I'm going to to stagger the dates of when I put them in. So I might put one row in, you know, this date and then wait and put another row in. And also, you know, I encourage you to like, I like to plant with the moon from the, from the um, new moon to the full moon is when I like to plant. And so during that window, you know, try to get what you can in and then just check the weather, be mindful of the weather as well. So we might be, you know, in May, we've, um, we'll be starting to plant in the garden, put seeds, those seeds that we wanna grow in, in the ground. We'll be getting those in, in May, but also We've uh, distributed seed starter kits, and so we have a lot of our community that are growing their own plants. And so they should be growing pretty good. So once it starts warming up like now, you can start taking those um, plants and putting them outside a little bit to get some sunlight and start acclimating them to the weather, to the, to the coldness. So it, like they say, it hardens them so it prepares them to go in the ground and so they're ready for it so it's not such a shock when you take it from indoors the warm out to the cooler weather so but don't leave them out there um, at night and always check I encourage everyone to check your weather at night check your weather so so I just want to you know we're we're going to have a short program this morning so I just wanted to share that much but I'm also going to be getting I'll be posting a video on um, the boxes that we're making. So I'll try to get a short video that I can that I can upload. But today is a really beautiful morning. I'm just gonna turn this back around. I wish our horses were still here. We have two new babies and I was out this morning and they just, I was so surprised they all came around. They were just all around me. So, to showing you such a beautiful beautiful day today and I want all of you to really take time and enjoy your day and to find the beauty in life and when you're out out in nature it just makes you feel good just like you know mother nature heals us and mother being with the earth putting your hands in the soil you know, it heals us. And now science is finally catching up to what our people already knew. Now, you know, you see the research says that the soil helps you, you know, it puts you in a better mood. And it's like our people knew this. That's why we were one with the land, with everything, you know, on the land, with the animal nations, with the plant nations. And so I just want to encourage you all to get outside for a little bit and enjoy just go sit out there, if anything, and enjoy your day. And um, we're going to have next week, we're, we're going to have a, a guest on the show. So we'll be back on, on um, a different format. But today, I just, I wanted to come outside and just show you, you know, the garden and encourage you to get start, get, start thinking about um, cleaning it, getting started with that, and also getting ready to plant. So thank you all. Have a beautiful day. We'll see you back next Sunday. I'll give you one more look before I sign off.